Thank you. Uh, hi, everyone. My name is Guillaume Moutier. I'm a data engineering architect at uh, Red Hat. Uh, mostly what I do is to help our uh, customers or to help organizations set up data science platforms. And when you set up such platform, uh, sometimes the most difficult part is the data engineering part, you know, all the infrastructure that you need, setting up your pipelines and, uh, and uh, all the things that goes further than just turning a model and uh, maybe just de de deploying a model. So today we'll talk about uh, a use case scenario on the smart city where we will see how to implement a data pipeline from edge to core. Uh, first, uh, I will start to, to, to set the stage with um, a few words about why we are doing this. Uh, oftentimes we found that data engineers, you know, they got a good product documentation on specific product itself, but it's harder to find full documentation and simple code on how to co compose those end-to-end -end data pipeline solutions, you know, using many different, uh, many different products. So here, what we, are trying to, what we are trying to achieve with what we are calling the Jumpstart Library is to provide all the tools, all the productivity tools uh, that uh, data engineers can, can use uh, by, you know, combining those uh, reusable patterns uh, that, that, that they will be able to, to, to put into motion into their own pipelines. And we try, of course, to, to illustrate the use cases with real world, uh, real world business cases. Um, so what we are providing in each, uh, in each pattern of those, uh, these Jumpstart libraries is a functioning demo, uh, the full uh, Python code, uh, the, of course, the YAML files to deploy this uh, onto, uh, onto OpenShift, or of course, you can adapt it sometime to, to, to make it run on Kubernetes. Um, sample data, sample machine learning models, all the automation that you need to deploy this model, and of course, a full documented do-it-yourself work workshop guide so that you are able to reproduce this demo and so that you are able to learn how to implement those patterns for, uh, for yourself. Uh, right now, we have two uh, of them that are available in different industries. First one in healthcare, that's uh, uh, another demo that maybe you've seen uh, earlier uh, this year or last year. It's about uh, a fully automated X-ray diagnosis pipeline. And now we are uh, launching for this very event, it's the first time I'm presenting this, uh, for a uh, smart city, green city uh, pipeline example, and we will have three more of them at least coming, uh, coming this year. Of course, we will use, uh, we'll deploy everything on top of uh, OpenShift. Uh, for those who don't know, OpenShift is the Red Hat distribution of Kubernetes, and we will use many different other tools, either from the, the Red Hat portfolio, such as uh, OpenShift Streams for Apache Kafka, uh, Data Foundation, which is the storage with Rooksaf and things like that. And we have also lots of different uh, open source tools that you can reproduce. So in this demo, you will see that I am, you know, switching from uh, either the, the, the downstream products or the upstream products. But as everything that Red Hat does is uh, open source, uh, at any point you can replace uh, some of the downstream components, so the, the one from Red Hat, by their equivalent uh, from the upstream. So the, 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 the full open source uh, version of, uh, of the tool. So let's go with our uh, scenario, the smart city, green city. Uh, this is uh, something that we have prepared with uh, my colleagues. Uh, and I'm eager to, to show you uh, what it is. Uh, we will start with the business deal, uh, because this is how normally you would approach a solution in, the, in your organization, trying to uh, see how you can solve uh, your uh, specific problem. So here we started with this scenario with the city of London, uh, where uh, there is uh, an area uh, around the city where there are limitations uh, for uh, entries for, uh, for the cars. It's a low emission zone. Um, and of course, there are some business needs that each, each and every city try, uh, try to achieve, uh, like uh, reducing congestion, uh, reducing pollution, or located wanted vehicles. What uh, you have in common for these three uh, business needs, for example, is that you need to gather data on which, uh, for example, which car is coming in, from where, at which time, 
and so you you have to gather this data so that you are able to analyze it and maybe train some model to react upon this data and then adapt your uh, your city policy to be able to achieve your business goals so we'll focus on this part of acquiring data and our uh, primary data pipeline for our solution pattern is this one uh, we will simulate around london that we have uh, different we have cameras at different entry points and of course they are uh, monitoring the traffic and they are taking pictures uh, of cars okay um, first stage what we will do is to recognize the license plate uh, for the, the the passing vehicle uh, we will you will see this is a two-stage model where we first we extract the license plate image itself and then once we have this image with the license plate we extract the uh the the, the number itself okay so we will recognize license plate for the the passing vehicle of course this information we will add timestamp uh, the location of each uh, license plate event okay i have rec basically is it's i have recognized this car passing at this station at this time that's the, our basic uh, row um, basic row information and this information we will send to uh, a data center uh, real time or let's imagine we have the the the, the core data center with the the uh, <clears throat> with the command uh, uh command office and we are sending all those data because we want first real time to notify uh officials if there are some uh, wanted vehicles uh, for amber alerts you know for a child abduction or if there are stolen vehicles uh, these are data that we want to uh, to compute real time but of course uh, we want to make some uh, processing with the data for uh, calculating fee for uh, fees for entering the city or uh, adding a, a dirty vehicle fee if if this is needed so this is data that we will use more uh, in a batch manner like processing the fees every 24 hours or maybe if we have uh, you know uh, historical data from the past few years then we can analyze this data to uh, detect patterns and, and things like that so that's our primary pipeline there is a secondary data pipeline that we can implement which is more related to to, to machine learning operations uh, mlops because of course we always want to retrain uh, our models so that they, they are accurate so at each tolling location we will recognize the license plate of the passing vehicles we'll do exactly the same exactly the same thing and wrenching the data uh, with the time stamps time stamp and, and location but sometimes uh, um, contrary as we did before we will also forward uh, the the license plate image itself uh, as a random sample and we will transfer everything to uh, the data center again here as we are storing uh, those uh, images and we are able to check the accuracy of our model or, and eventually retrain the model to, to approve our uh, prediction. Once this model has been retrained, of course, we can send it back to each of our tolling location where the real-time inference is happening, okay? So here, we are doing this for the MLOps because, of course, we don't want to, uh, to uh, uh, send back each and every image into the, the core. There's no need for that because we are doing the inferencing at the edge. We are already recognizing the license plate uh, at the edge. But sometimes we want to uh, to 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 send the full uh, package of data back so that we can do this uh, this retraining. Okay. Of course, again, uh, maybe I will say it again. This is a totally fictitious scenario, but you can see that it fits to something that is plausible you know it's it, it can be the real business case and the real use case uh, how you will uh, implement it uh, although of course there are many different ways to uh, to achieve uh, to achieve the same uh, the same goals but here this is the, the scenario that uh, that we said a lot um this ml apps uh this this ml apps uh, uh, flow uh, you know it comes in, into this uh, kind of reference uh, blueprint for, the, for for those kind of uh, uh, flows where we are first gathering data then developing our machine learning model 
uh, then we can deploy it into an application. And of course, we will always model and manage uh, this uh, this model along its uh, lifeline. Okay, so this is part of another presentation that we have at Red Hat around, uh, generally speaking, data science platforms. Uh, if you are interested to learn more about this, uh, reach out and we can organize something. Let's see the technical architecture of our um, uh, of our pipeline. So. Again, we will have uh, this video stream coming in. So here, of course, I don't have cameras handy uh, all around London. So we will simulate the feed by uh, sending a set of uh, images that, uh, that we already have. Uh, we will send uh, the, those images to the uh, to uh, license plate recognition model, which will, uh, this is the first stage model that will extract the image of the license plate. Then there is another model that will extract, you know, the license plate number itself. And with the added uh, data, the, the, the location and the timestamp, this is an event that we are going to send to uh, a topic into Kafka. So we have uh, uh, an instance of Kafka running, uh, running at our edge uh, locations, and we are uh, sending this, uh, this data here, okay? We will use this feature, this uh, Kafka Mirror Maker, to transfer the data from our central location to another Kafka instance at the core. We are using Kafka Mirror. Oh no, I will send it. I will go to here. Yeah, uh, we will, we are using this pattern with the Kafka Mirror Maker because that's a uh, that's a neat way uh, to. Uh, preserve yourself from you know, uh, network issues and things like that. Meaning that uh, whenever there is a disconnection between the edge location and the core, here in our Kafka edge uh, location, we will still uh, record data, we will still ingest the data and buffer them, you know, persist them into our, uh, into our Kafka queue. Uh, but when, the, um, when the, 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 the network is back again, we can have, uh, through Mirror Maker, we can have our central location fetch the data, and you know it will, uh, it will uh, restart exactly where it left when the, the connection uh, was lost. So that's, uh, that's a pattern uh, here that we wanted to illustrate so that, um, you see, you can put in place those buffers ar around your pipelines to make sure that you always have uh, that that you don't lose any data from going from one point to the other. Okay, so that's the Kafka part. We have uh, different listeners now to our Kafka topic. First, we have a, a, a listener that is uh, looking for a specific license plates. Okay, uh, there, there, there is vehicle uh, that we may that we may want to find uh, for for uh, different reasons. So here I'm listening real time to uh, my Kafka topic, and I'm displaying the data. Uh, if uh, I'm, I'm displaying an alert, if there is a wanted car that has been uh, that has been found. Okay, we have uh, another uh, thing happening here. Uh, we can make ad hoc reporting uh, using superset or we can have uh, an engine for the toll processing and everything that will rely upon uh, Starburst Presto or Trino, uh, the upstream version in this, uh, in the demo I will show you, the, I mean, I'm using Trino. And this, uh, this Trino engine will fetch data from different sources. First, here we have an S3 bucket, an object storage bucket. And I didn't talk about this part, but there is another component that is uh, listening to our Kafka topic. This component is called Secor. Uh, it's an open source project uh, that was uh, created by uh, Pinterest. And it's uh, pretty handy for any data engineering pipeline because uh, what it allows you to do is to gather uh, data from Kafka, aggregate it, and save it in different formats, uh, you know, ORC, Parquet, or whatever, and save it to an S3, uh, an S3 backend. So that's a pretty, uh, pretty neat tool to do exactly this: gather uh, whatever event uh, you are streaming into Kafka and persist uh, those events into your object storage. Okay. We have also here a PostgreSQL database uh, that is simulating the vehicle registration uh, database where we have further information, you know, on a specific car, uh, its model, 
uh, its owner. And so with uh, Trino, we can query both of those uh, both of those uh, data sets, both of those data sources uh, at the same time. And then we can um, display uh, everything uh, in, in different dashboards uh, into Grafana. Okay, and now it's time to show you the real thing. So here in my environment, uh, if I switch and maybe I will zoom a little for you, so you can see that it's uh, pretty crowded. There are lots of uh, containers running on, different Kafka cluster and things like that. But this will be interesting. Uh, I would share with you the location of uh, the code and everything. So if you want to have a look at it, but of course we are, as I said, we are providing all the uh, all the tools and instructions to deploy all this environment for yourself and what you get at the end is a dashboard like this so let me uh, walk you through it so on the big map uh, uh, this is the, the london map obviously and what you can see is that we have our different stations and we are directly uh, displaying the number of cars that have been uh, that have been detected in the time period. So here in Grafana, I'm looking at the last 30 minutes. Uh, maybe I can change it to the last hour. And um, of course, so you see the, 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 the numbers have changed. So that's what we are simulating here in this dashboard. I have uh, my uh, data coming in, so uh, car images, the, the, um, the image itself is processed, the license plate is recognized, and, and then I am able to, uh, to, to count the data coming in, okay? That's exactly what you can see here. I have uh, this uh, small part of the dashboard where there is always a picture of the, the, the last detected car, okay? Also, uh, we can see the, the dedicated license plate uh, along with the model, uh, and with the owner of the car, okay? Because if you remember, uh, uh, when I'm sending this information, uh, in, in Kafka, I'm only sending the timestamp, uh, the, the, the license plate number with the timestamp and uh, the, the location uh, of the car. But of course, I'm enriching this data uh, at the core uh, with the, uh, the, the vehicle registration uh, data. That's what allows me to, uh, to display here some more information. Okay, uh, and you can see uh, also that the model itself is not really performant because okay, sometimes it guess uh, it guesses the, the right number, uh, but sometimes there, there are some discrepancies. So that's why you want to put this other pipeline uh, in, into motion to constantly retrain your model and redeploy uh, everything at, uh, at the edge once it's trained. Uh, I have here this, um, this small panel where you can see the distribution for each, uh, for each uh, station, so each of the stall stations uh, uh, around London. Uh, we have here a heat map with the, the number of vehicles that were detected over the period. So here directly, you can see that, for example, station A1, station A13, and A5201, you can see that there is some more traffic. Uh, coming in. So that's an example on how you could display this kind of information on the live dashboard for your your uh, operators. You can monitor real time uh, what, how's, the, how's the traffic going, okay? And finally, uh, on this part, you have uh, the wanted vehicle, uh, wanted vehicles panel. So here it's a simple table where I am uh, sending uh, the, the, the event timestamp with the license plate number and the station, meaning that at uh, 6.15, uh, yes, I'm based in Canada, it's quite early here, at uh, 6.15, AM, this license plate uh, G526JHD has been detected at station A1. Okay, so that's the kind of information that you uh, you are able also to uh, to present real time in, in your dashboard. Of course, there are other things that you would want to 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 display, uh, and I've created uh, some other examples here on this dashboard. Uh, we have a, a, a reminder of our workflow. Uh, so 
uh, on the Smart City Edge uh, app. Uh, that's where you know we are gathering uh, the, uh, the, the, the video feed or the pictures that we are sending to the inference API. Once the license plate number comes back, we are sending it to Kafka, to our edge inst in the instance of Kafka. Then Mirror Maker is pushing this to the core uh, into our other Kafka instance, where the, the C core component will gather this data and push it into our S3 bucket uh, that is uh, provided by uh, Ceph. And uh, here, what I'm figuring is the CPU consumption of those uh, different elements. So that's another aspect that you want to monitor. So here, maybe it's much more an IT ops uh, dashboard. Uh, it's not directly related to the business needs, but to trust the monitoring of your pipeline, just to see if there, are, there is some more consumption of resources. And here I have also the, the consumption of memory. And uh, of course, all those uh, all those uh, numbers, you, well, they don't change much, but believe me, they are real time. Those are the numbers that are fetched directly from uh, Kubernetes, from the Kubernetes API and, and displayed here into the dashboard, okay? Now, uh, let's go to the last part of this demo. Uh, I would go to Superset. Uh, Superset, for those who are not familiar uh, with it, is, um, is a dashboard tool, you know, similar to, uh, uh, to Tableau or Power BI to create your own dashboards, except it's uh, fully open source. And what you can do with it is uh queries and here i have a saved query that i can use and i will open it maybe i will zoom a little bit for you so here this query is quite simple i want to uh, retrieve the timestamp i want to retrieve the, the the license plate uh the the make and model of the car the owner of the car, which station he, he, the car has been uh, detected. And here, what I will uh, use is my connection to Trino. Uh, if you, uh, that's uh, Trino Hive, uh, the, the, the database. If you remember, I have this component. Uh, Trino, uh, again, for those who don't know, is a distributed uh, SQL query engine that can that you can uh, plug on two different sources. In, in my case, uh, I have two different data source in Trino. One is my S3 bucket, so meaning you can also query, uh, you know, a CSV or, or bucket files directly stored into your S3 storage. And at the same time, I have another connection to my PostgreSQL database, the database with the vehicle registration. And because I'm using Trino, I'm even able to, to do joins on those two different uh, heterogeneous uh, data sources, S3 and PostgreSQL. So here I'm doing a, a join uh, on those two tables, the event uh, tables, which has only the license plate number and timestamps, and the uh, VI code registration that has all the other information. If I run it, it will take a few seconds. And you can see that I have exactly the, 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 the result I wanted to see. You have the timestamp, uh, the, the license plate number. So at this time, this license plate has been recognized and we I can see that it's a BMW uh, 3 Series and the owner is uh, Maria Harris. It has been detected at station 813. Of course, don't worry, all those data are totally uh, fake. <laughs> you know, there's no Maria, well, maybe there is Maria Harris in the world, but uh, definitely uh, this is uh, totally uh, synthetic data uh, to, uh, that I'm generating here, okay? And we can have a look at what happens behind the scene. Here, this is my uh, Trino uh, overview, and I will just display uh, the, the, the query. Uh, that we run here. This is this one. And you can have, as you see, many more information on how the query was run, uh, how much time it took, uh, the, the, the consumption of uh, resources, 
uh, the number of rows that were uh, <coughs> that, that that were extracted. You also have a life plan of your query, so you can see uh, that here it fetched uh, on stage two uh, about 1,000 rows. Uh, on stage four, that's from the database, the vehicle registration, you see it's only 28 rows because this is a simulation. And then it did the join and you have all this information. We did about 72,000 uh, rows uh, coming in from this join from which we extracted uh, 1,000. But of course, everything, this uh, optimization of the query, the running of the query, everything is taken care of by Trino or the downstream version, which is Starburst uh, Presto. And from your perspective as a data engineer, you only have to connect to uh, your superset uh, environment and you can run those type of queries. Uh, the good thing is that because Trino is a distributed SQL engine, it will, uh, you know, it will have uh, many different uh, workers meaning that you can query terabytes uh, of data, okay? Even if the query takes a few hours to complete, you can definitely launch it to Trino. That's, uh, the, that's, how, it, um, that, that, that's how it works. Um, I guess that's all I have for the live demo. So let me just uh, go back here to my scenario because it's always good after seeing it live to just come back and see what we have done. Uh, again, we had these, uh, these uh, simulated video streams with uh, car pictures coming in, uh, license plate recognition model to extract the license plate itself, then the OCR model to, to extract the license plate number. Um, we, you have the, 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 the metadata and timestamp that is added. Everything is sent to Kafka then mirror to another Kafka into our core. Uh, the data is persisted into our object storage uh, with, uh, with C-Core. Uh, we have alerts uh, coming in directly uh, with the listener on our, uh, on our uh, Kafka topic here. And then we have uh, all the uh, engines that are able to query those data. Uh, okay, so the Trino slash Starburst uh, Presto distributed SQL engine that is able to query the different data that you can access through Superset. And of course, you can display all this data through uh, Grafana. Okay, so um, that's what we had here. And uh, of course, this, um, this presentation uh, will be uh, made available uh, following uh, the event. And uh, you will be able to, to look at the GitHub repo um, and see and have a look at all the code that is here that you can use to reproduce uh, the, the, the demo. Uh, I don't know if there are any questions. Uh, you can ask them directly in the chat. As we have a few minutes left, maybe I can directly show you uh, this uh, repo. Let me go through here to the Jumpstart uh, library. And again, I will zoom a little bit. So uh, it's under the Red Hat Data Services Organization, the Jumpstart uh, library repo. And you can see that we are describing the patterns that we have. So pattern one was the X-ray analysis automated pipeline. Then this is our smart city scenario. And if I go to this uh, pattern, there is some more description. And then you have all the uh, description, the full description <coughs> again of the, uh, of the scenario. And if I go there on deploy, you see on the deploy uh, folder, you have all the guide to deploy everything. So all the instructions, all the commands that you have to run and everything with all the code uh, being available for you uh, on those different folders. You have, of course, also in the source, you have all the source for the different containers uh, that we are using. Uh, it's mostly Python code in, in, in this case, so that you are able to see uh, what's, uh, what's going on, okay? 
So I see that there is a, a question in the chat. Oh, it's Keith. Hi, Keith. Um, so you can link these images with another system that can check if it has tax to be on the road and also in there if there is insurance. Yes, totally. And uh, here, this is the last part of the demo that uh, I didn't show you yet because it's not fully backed. But from all this data, there is a, a, an engine that will be run to process the data uh, to, um, you see, to, to create the, the, the bills that, that you need to pay. You know, it's processing the different fees for a 24 hours period so that you can, um, so, that, so that people can be billed. But of course, you, can, you could also, uh, you could also link it to another system to see uh, exactly as you are asking, to see if there is uh, insurance uh, that has been paid or things like that. Um, conceptually, the, the way I would do this is to add, if I go back to uh, this slide here, for example, the, 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 the way I uh, would do this is at this point, once uh, everything is persisted or just uh, listening on the Kafka topic, I would I could have another engine that just makes a, a quick uh, API call to this other system to ask, okay, I've seen this uh, license plate number, does it have insurance or or not? Okay, uh, you have to have a fast system if you want to do it real time, obviously, but. Uh, this is totally feasible uh, con con conceptually, but that's exactly the way that you can enrich those system, those systems, uh, and that's what I like in this kind of disconnected patterns. Uh, and here I'm saying it's disconnected because, okay, this part on the edge, this is something that is happening, and the um, the, 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 um, the license plate number is sent. That's it. Then the edge is totally autonomous. We could totally modify this part of the pipeline, change it, and make something else. Here, because I'm using Kafka, I can feed different systems from the same Kafka topic. I have Secor to persist to persist the data into my S3 bucket, but I have here another system for the uh, alerts, and I can have a third, a fourth, and whatever number of system that I want that is able to pick this data and to do something else, you know, to process the data differently. Another question, how long did it take from start to finish to get this demo up and running? Um, to be honest, it takes quite a lot of time, uh, a few weeks, uh, a few weeks of three people, uh, obviously not working 24 seven on this, uh, <clears throat> but let's say it's 25% uh, uh, of the time of three people for, uh, I would say, three to four weeks. That, that's the amount of time it, it took us to uh, to create this. But we started from scratch. We had to uh, to uh, find a model. We didn't create this this model for license plate recognition, but we had to find one to package it uh, to prepare the data set. Uh, we had to devise all the architecture here. We had to uh, understand better how you use uh, Secor to do this, uh, all the configuration, the deployments, and everything for uh, for Trino, for Superset, for Grafana, and, and all this construction. And Yes, granted, it takes quite a lot of time to set up all of this. That's exactly why we are now sharing those recipes so that people are able to take not this whole pattern. You know, not everyone works into a, a city, uh, a city console, and wants to implement this exact same, uh, this exact same, exact same pipeline. But uh, if you are only interested, oh yes, this uh, Kafka to S3 thing is uh, really, really interesting. Or uh, how do I deploy uh, Ceph or OpenShift Data Foundation onto OpenShift to uh, to use it as an S3 storage in my uh, on-prem in my organization? Or how do I deploy deploy uh, Trino and uh, hook it to Superset? There, there are some little tricks here, but all of those tricks are now open source are available for everyone to consume meaning that by you know fetching those different uh, lego bricks uh, you can create your own pipelines from those patterns and there are other other 
uh, small patterns that are available in the other uh, demo that is also available on the uh, on the repo, the extra demo, where we are using um, uh, S3 bucket notification functions that would trigger serverless functions into Kubernetes using Knative, uh, Knative eventing and Knative serving. So those are different patterns that you can use. And, and that's our goal here to provide those different little pieces of uh, recipes, little recipes, li li little patterns that people can reuse uh, later on inside their own uh, inside their own workflows. Okay, um, I guess we are reaching the end of this session. Um, I will be available to uh, continue answer a question uh, in the different chats of the event. Uh, if you uh, if you want to to continue ask uh, ask questions or have discussions on this, and uh, you can always reach out directly to me if you have uh, any more questions regarding data science platforms uh, in general and especially data engineering uh, pipelines, uh, because this is what I'm 